Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today, we're going to be building another gaming computer. One of my really good friends texted me saying, Hey, should I buy this computer from Best Buy? After taking a look at the specs of that computer, I, I guaranteed him that I could build a better one for the same price. Let's get started. Let's take a quick look at the computer my friend was interested in. It's a CyberPower PC. The hardware in this unit is pretty standard for what you'd expect for a PC in this price point. It's using a Ryzen 5 3600 6 core processor. The RX 580 graphics card has an SSD and a normal hard drive with 8 gigs of RAM. My goal for this build is to make sure I can get an upgrade on all of the core components. Let's start with the processor. Instead of the Ryzen 5 3600, I went with the Ryzen 5 3600X instead. I know it's not a major upgrade, but it does have a slightly higher base and turbo speed. The difference is probably marginal, but I wanted to upgrade all the parts if I could. Installing the processor is easier than it looks. Just make sure to have the socket prepped by unlocking the lever and raising it. On your processor, there should be a golden arrow on one of the sides, and a matching arrow can be found on your motherboard as well. Just line them up and let the processor drop into place. Don't use any force, and remember to hold the processor from its sides only so you don't accidentally damage the pins on the back. Once the processor has dropped into place, you can just lock the lever, securing it into place. For the cooler, I kept it simple and used the heatsink that came with the processor. My friend won't be overclocking or doing anything crazy on this computer, so it should be good enough and I can use the few dollars that I saved on a different component. The heatsink is also fairly easy to install. First, we remove the four screws holding the two brackets. Next, just line up the four screws on the bottom of the heatsink with the board and tighten them up until fully locked. The thermal paste is pre-applied, so if you're a first-time builder or just aren't comfortable applying your own, you don't have to worry about it. I like to tighten the screws halfway on the first pass and going around diagonally until they're all in place. Then I just tighten all of them in. Now that the CPU and the heatsink are on, we can move on to the memory. Remember the pre-built computer was using only 8 gigs of memory. I decided to step that up to 16 gigs because that's the new minimum standard for any premium PC. Or at least it should be. I picked up the G-Skill Rip Jaws because it was a great deal, and if you haven't noticed yet, the theme for this PC is black and red. Installing the memory is probably the easiest and the most satisfying part of the build. Similar to the processor, just make sure you have prepped your board by setting the notch in the open position. Keep in mind, some boards, only one side needs to be unlocked. After prepping the board, just line up the grooves in the notches and use light to medium force to click it into place. It only goes in one way so you shouldn't have to apply too much pressure or worry about installing it incorrectly. If you did everything right, you can hear this sweet, satisfying click of success. After installing the memory, we can set the motherboard to the side while we prep our case. I'm using the Corsair Carbide Spec Delta case for this build. It matches the theme perfectly and has pre-installed RGB fans and we all know RGB makes your computer twice as fast. Prepping the case is really easy. Just remove the side panels one at a time by unscrewing or unlocking the mechanism that secures the panels into place. Next, install the I.O. shield by lining it up with the opening on your case and applying pressure to the sides only. I'm not sure how, but I lost the recording of the I.O. shield being installed, but you can check out my previous video for reference if you need it. After installing the I.O. shield, I line up the motherboard with the cutouts on the I.O. shield and place the board on the standoffs. Make sure to install additional standoffs if needed. After the board is resting on the standoffs, you can secure it into place with screws that came with your case. Most cases leave screws and manuals in the hard drive bay, so that's the first place I look. And I always give the board a gentle lift after screwing it into place to make sure it's properly secured. Before we move on to installing the power supply, let's just connect all the case cables. The case cables for this unit were USB 3.0, HD audio, four fans, the front panel power button along with the reset, and the RGB controller for the front three fans. If you don't recognize the connectors on the motherboard by their appearance, please refer to your motherboard manual and take your time installing these. I did run into a problem with the RGB controller. The motherboard that I picked didn't have an RGB header, so I had to do some creative problem solving. In my last video, I installed an RGB strip and it came with a controller that was SATA powered. So I was able to reuse the controller and plug the fans into that. More on this later as well. With the motherboard installed and the case cables taken care of, it's finally time to install the power supply. I'm using a semi-modular power spec bronze rated 650 watt power supply. 
I always recommend modular or semi-modular because it makes cable management so much easier. For this build, we only need two extra cables plugged into the power supply to power our graphics card and our peripherals like storage devices and of course the RGB controller we just talked about. Remember when I said I didn't like building in this case? Well, you're about to see why. The hard drive bay is directly in front of the power supply and it doesn't have enough clearance for the power supply cables to just drop into place. Having used plenty of other cases before, this was a bit of a surprise. I thought I was doing something wrong, so I tried removing the HD audio and one fan cable I had running through the channel to see if that would be enough clearance for the power supply to get through. It wasn't. As my patience and desire to live was dwindling fast, I realized I should take a look at the manual before realizing manuals are for babies, and also it didn't really have anything useful in it. Then I decided to remove the additional power cables I had installed to see if that would be enough clearance, and ding ding ding, it sure was. Using the screws it came with, I secured the power supply into place and while doing so, I dropped a screw under the case, because that's exactly what happens when you're building a PC at 4am. After securing the power supply and realizing there wasn't enough room to route the two cables we had removed before, I decided to take a quick break and try to find out who designed this case and where they live now. After looking for a few seconds, I decided to give up on looking up the details and get back to building. I tried my best to see if I could finesse the cables in there, but the clearance just wasn't enough. And this is when I realized I would have to remove the entire hard drive bay to install the power supply correctly. This isn't a hard thing to do, so I shouldn't be as rough on the case as I am, but in my defense, it was 4 in the morning and I had spent 30 minutes trying to install the power supply. Also, it's 2020, we should have cases that don't require this. After removing the hard drive bay, I routed and installed the two peripheral cables again and secured the hard drive bay back into place. Since we were working with the hard drive bay, I thought this would be a good time to install the choice of our mass storage. I went with a Seagate 2TB 7200 RPM hard drive while the pre-built PC was using a 5200 RPM one. And since we were installing the storage devices, I thought this would be a good time to install our SSD as well. I tried to look up what SSD speeds the pre-built computer was using, but the only information I could find was it was not the M2 factor. So I installed a 256 gig, 2.5 inch SSD. Technically it was 16 gigs more than what the pre-built PC had, so I was okay with considering that an upgrade, even though it was barely one. Let me know what you guys think. Should this count as an upgrade? At this point, I could feel the sun rising and started to speed up the install. I ran the SATA power cables to the hard drive, to the SSD, and to the RGB controller. I also routed the GPU and CPU power cables to the front, along with the HD audio and the fan cable I had removed earlier to fit the power supply in. For the graphics card, if you remember the pre-built computer was using an RX 580, but my friend really wanted an NVIDIA card. I had the choice between getting a 1650 Super or using something I had on hand. I ended up using a GTX 1070 that provided better performance than the RX 580 even though it was an older model. I unscrewed the back plates and was ready to install the GPU. GPU installation is very similar to memory installation. You set the notch to open and just snap the GPU into place. After snapping it into place, I secured it with the screws that were securing the back plates we had just removed earlier. All that was left to do was to give the motherboard, CPU, and GPU some juice and route the SATA cables from the storage devices to the motherboard. Any hope I had of sleeping was quickly gone because I realized the SATA connectors were right under the GPU. So I removed the GPU to install the SATA cables and then put the GPU back in. At this point, even my cat was worried about me and decided to walk by it to make sure I was doing okay. And that was it. Everything was done. Just a little bit more cable management on the back and I close up the panels we had removed earlier. Of course, I thought I was done, but I knew that you guys would want to see the plastic being removed, and it required the screws holding the panel to come off again. So to give you guys what you want, I had to remove the screws and hold the panel so it wouldn't fall off. If you want to thank me for the extra effort, you can like the video and subscribe to my channel. It also enters you into a chance to win the $600 gaming PC I built in my last video. Overall, the moral of the story is, Never build your friends a computer. The giveaway that I'm doing is self-sponsored, so I'm paying for it. If you, if you like my content, if you like my videos, please consider subscribing and liking the videos. 
I'm trying to grow the channel and uh, hopefully we can attract some sponsors and, and hopefully we'll have more cool stuff to give away in the future. Thanks so much. See you around. Before we end the video, I wanted to let you guys know I'm giving away the computer that I built in my last video. I'll link it up there and it'll be in the description below as well. To win, all you have to do is be a subscriber to the channel and like this video. I'll be picking a random winner in the next few weeks. Good luck!